Hello everyone, Travis here from Travis.media, continuing on in the series called JavaScript for Bulma. Now Bulma is a front-end CSS framework. It's like Bootstrap, but it has no JavaScript. It's open source and it's got some great features, but it has no JavaScript and I personally don't mind at all because instead of having to use some uh, JavaScript library that has a bunch of components we may not even use. We can just use vanilla JavaScript as needed for these components and elements. So my point with these video tutorials is to work through the JavaScript to make these Bulma components work. All right, so in the first video, we looked at the Bulma modal and how to open a modal box and close a modal box with vanilla JavaScript. In this video, we're going to look at how to cycle through the tabs, the Bulma tabs. So let's get started. So if you go to the Bulma documentation and you go to components and come down here to tabs, it will give you a variety of tabs you can use in your project. So here we have tabs uh, to the left, tabs to the center, we have tabs with icons, we have enclosed tabs, um, all kind of different things. So for this example, I'm just going to come up here and choose the most basic tabs that are centered. So that's going to be the second option. And I'm going to copy this HTML and go to my project and for my project I just have a basic WordPress site a development site I think I'm using underscores I erased everything I have a blank page and my purpose in this is just to show you how to use JavaScript with Bulma and by the way also uh, I just put the Bulma script in the header so see the CDN that you can get from the Bulma site so that's just for expediency in getting this started, you can use NPM, you can bring it into your project however you want. But anyway, let's take the, that tab HTML and paste it in our project. All right, and it's got four tabs, pictures, music, videos, and documents. I'm just going to use three, so I'm going to erase documents and save it. And let's take a look at what that looks like. So it looks pretty good right out the box. So I have a pictures tab, a music tab, and a videos tab. What we're going to do in this tutorial is that I'm going to show you how to, when we click on pictures, it's going to show some content down here for pictures. When we click on music, it'll show the content for music and so on. So we have our tabs. The next step is we need to add content down here. And we're going to add all three. We're going to add content for all three tabs. And then we're just going to hide and show as we need. So let's go back to our page.php or whatever HTML you're using. And let's come right below the tabs and let's add in three divs. And this is going to be our tab content. So for the first one, for example, my first tab is pictures. I'm going to add some content for the pictures. So, and I'm going to be putting an ID with the same name as the tab. So for example, in the first div, I'm going to put div with an ID of pictures. Then I'm going to put a header in there. Let's do an H3 and put the same name. So pictures. I have a title of pictures. And for some text, I'm just going to go to my lorem ipsum generator and grab some text to fill it in. I'm going to paste that in my paragraph tags. And there we go. That's the pictures content. So I'm going to copy this twice and fill in the info for my next tab. So the next tab is music. It's going to have a title of music. And the last tab is um, videos, I believe, with the title of videos. And by the way, I'm going to change this lorem ipsum a little bit so when we change tabs we can see the difference better. So I'm just going to select some different text for my next two and paste it in here for the content. And you can do this or not, either way. So I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to save it and look at the page to see what it looks like. All right. So I have three tabs and I have three content sections. And it looks like my headers are still small. One good thing about Bulma is it doesn't force you to have an H1, H2 size, H3 size. You can actually add, you can have an H1 and then add the size you want. 
So I can easily come in here and put a uh, class of is size three, which I think is like two REMs. I can put is size one, I can put whatever I want there. So I'm not bound to a size. So I'm gonna put that for all three. And that's just to make my header stand out a little bit. Yeah, good. All right, so obviously we don't wanna show all three. We just want to show the one related to the active tab. So when I click on pictures, I want pictures to show and so forth. So I think we need to now move into the JavaScript. But before we do that, let's add some classes so that we can target our elements. So the main two elements here are the tabs and the content. So let's add some classes so that we can target these. So up here for the tab links, I'm just going to add a class of tab links to each one. So we can do get elements by ID, uh, get elements by class name, and then loop through those and make the changes we need. Down here, I'm going to add a class of tab content to each one. So right after the ID, I'm just going to paste that in and save it. All right, so I have the ability now to target these divs and elements. So if I refresh the page, there should be no difference. Good. So let's get to the JavaScript. So I created a file. It's just custom.js. And we are going to do a little pseudocode to decide how we're going to do this. So of course, we're going to create a function that is called when we click on a tab. So step one, when we click on a tab, we need to hide all of the content. So as a little pseudocode here, let's get all elements with the class tab content and hide them. That's step one. Step two, we need to get all of the elements with the class tab links. So there, there, that's our tabs. We need to get all of those elements and remove the is active class from any of them. Okay, so we're basically just resetting things. We're hiding the content and we're removing the active class from the tabs. And by the way, since we're using Bulma, they use is active, so that's what we're going to use. So step two, we need to get all elements with the class tab links. We're going to loop through those and remove the class is active. All right, that's step two. Step three, we need to show the current tab, and we need to add the is active class to that tab. Show current tab and add is active to that tab. So that's it, three steps. Every time we click on a tab, it's gonna hide the content, it's gonna take away all the active classes, and add the active class to the tab that we clicked and show its content every single time. Three steps. So let's get started and create our function. So let's create a function, I'm gonna call it open tab. And for the parameters, we're of course gonna have the event and we're going to have another parameter of tab ID. If you remember over here, we added IDs to each one of the contents, and they're named the same as the tab. So we have the tab called pictures. We have content down here with an ID of pictures. So we just link the two together. So we have two parameters, event and tab ID. And I'm going to put the closing brace below this, and we're just going to work through these. So get all elements with the class tab content and hide them. So the first step is let's target those elements. So document, get elements by class name, and the class is called tab content. Easy enough. So now let's loop through these elements and hide them. So I'm gonna use a basic for loop because most people know that and it's just easy to, to use. So let's do for and our basic arguments here. So our counter is i, i is equal to zero, as long as i is less than tab content dot length, we're going to keep looping, and each time we're going to increment the counter by one. So, as we loop through each one, we want to hide it. So let's do tab content, and of course we need to put our index there. Dot style dot display equals none. So this is going to hide all of our elements. 
Let's save that and let's move on to step two. And this may or may not work, we'll see in a minute, but we're gonna finish out the JavaScript and get it going that way. So let's go to step two. It's basically the same thing here. Actually, I'm just gonna copy this up here and paste it. This is gonna be, so we need to get all the elements with the class tab links and remove the class is active. So tab links, document get elements by class name, and the class is tab links, and for each element, tab links dot length. So for each element, let's do this over here. So tab links, here's our counter, dot class name. So we need to target that class name of each one of these elements. Is going to equal tab links counter dot class name dot replace and we are replacing the is active class with nothing all right so our tab links class name so each the class name for each element that's all this is doing is going to equal tab links dot class name replace so we're going to replace this is active class with nothing. So basically we're just removing the is active class. All right, in step three, we need to show the current tab and add is active to that tab. So we're passing the tab ID as an argument so we can target that tab ID and set its style display to block so we can show the content. All right, so we just need to put document.get elements by ID and we are getting the tab ID element dot style dot display equals block so the tab ID is going to be the content below you know the pictures the music the videos and we are going to set its display to block so this is going to show the content for that tab now we need to add the is active to that tab so we can do event dot current target and if you've never seen that, oh, whoops. The current, the event dot current target. Let me just show you real quick. All right, the current target event property returns the element whose event listeners triggered the event. So that's going to be the tab, the tab that we clicked. So event dot current target dot class name. plus equals so we're going to append the class of is active and that is all all right so that's going to show our content for that tab and that's going to add the is active class to that tab then when we click on a different tab it's going to remove it's going to hide all of the content it's going to remove the is active class from all the tabs and then it's going to show that tab and add is active to that tab and on and on and on. That's all this function is doing. All right, so that is our function. Now, how do we call this function? Well, we need to go back to our tabs. So here's our tab links. And we need to add an on click for each one. So when we click on the pictures tab, we want to call the open tab function that we just created. And it's going to have two arguments. The first one is, of course, event. The second one rem remembers the tab ID. So the tab ID down here that we want to show is pictures. So we're going to pass pictures here. And that's it. We need to do that for each one. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to add an on click to the next two. The next tab is music. We want to show the music content below. And we want to show the videos below for that one. So let's try this out. Um, but there's one more thing we need to do. If you look here, we are replacing the is active with nothing um, when we remove the is active class. You notice we put this space here. We're assuming that the is active comes as the second class. So I'm going to just take this is active here and just put it behind the tab links like that, just to keep it uniform. Um, and let's try this out. So let's go to our page. Let's refresh. All right, let's click around. So let's click on music. Boom, music is showing. So it's hiding all the content. 
It's taking away all the active classes, and then it's showing the content for that tab and making that tab active. Every single click. Click videos, video shows. Click pictures, picture shows. Looks good. Things are great. But let's say that you want, uh, when you start the page, you want just the pictures to be showing by default. So you could come to your CSS, you could do uh, tab content, display none. And then whatever one you want to display, uh, change that. So let's say we want the pictures to display only. So when the page first loads, you're going to hide all the tab content. And then you're just going to show the pictures content. So you can, you can do it like this, because as soon as you start clicking around, the JavaScript's going to take over. So this is an option. If we refresh the page, you see just the picture shows. If I click music, now everything works fine. So that's an option too. Another option is you can um, set as a class, like a default tab, and then um, make that tab to show somehow with JavaScript when you load the page. But I think this is pretty sufficient. If I reload the page, picture shows again, and that's it. So that's all, guys. Um, our tabs works, and that's all you have to do to incorporate vanilla JavaScript to use the tabs in Bulma. Hope that helps, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good day.